All right, so we're continuing on with uh, Swami Vivekananda's Song of the Sannyasin. He says, Truth never comes where lust and fame and greed of gain reside. No man who thinks of woman as his wife can ever perfect be, nor he who owns the least of things, nor he whom anger chains can ever pass through Maya's gates. So give these up, sannyasin bold. Say Om, Tatsat, Om. He's just drawing more conclusions about how this idea of oneness is the, the root of all ethics, that all knowledge of good and evil can be deduced from the idea that the ultimate truth is one without a second. That's where love the Lord your God comes from. That's where love your neighbor as you love yourself comes from. It's where purity, the ideas of purity come from. It's the reason behind most of our practices in spiritual life. And so you can see that all of morality is, is dependent upon this one eternal truth, that in the end there is just one without a second. He says that this lust, you know, lust requires the sense of other. And for every one person that a lustful person can love, there's a dozen others whom he rejects. And so that unity cannot be reached through that method. That understanding of our nature cannot be reached through that method. Fame is the same thing. It requires exclusion. You can't have a famous person unless you have unknown people. And so that also is a source of division, a source of separateness that uh, leads to, to delusion. So this unity is the underlying principle. Greed of gain, exactly the same. It's the member of that dual family. For you to have, someone else must not have. For you to be rich requires someone to not be rich. For you to have the money, someone had to give it to you. And so again, we see that any of these things that depend upon the multiplicity for their definition and for their achievement are in the end false. In the end, they are a violation of our nature of oneness, that nature of love and intelligence and existence absolute. No man who thinks of woman as his wife can ever perfect be that sense of ownership, that me and mine, even in relationship, as beautiful as relationships are, when they are treated uh, as a form of a worship of that oneness, seeing yourself in your partner, treating your partner as you would treat yourself, those are things that lead toward that oneness. But this idea of ownership, this idea of two, is always problematic in spiritual life, uh, you know, and needs, needs to be discerned, uh, needs to be studied so that it can be transcended. He who owns the least of things, to own anything, even to have that idea of ownership within you, again, means that you, you believe that the vast majority of things are not owned by you. And so the wonder of this unity is that all things are of you, like all of the things in a dream are of your own creation, of your own fantasy. So this world, Swami Prabhudananda humorously told me a story one time about going shopping at uh, Nordstrom's and he was thinking about how the whole the world was his. He says, yes, I own everything here in this store. I just choose to keep it here. If I want to come down here and put this jacket on, I can put this jacket on and walk around the store and when I'm finished, I can put it back. So you see, I own all things <laughs> and he chuckled. And uh, But that same idea, that ownership is again dependent on that particular and its ultimate root is exclusion because you can't own everything, as it were. He whom anger chains, someone who's not in control of their, of their emotions, you know, who is there to be angered? And who is there to be angry? You know, that, that there's this unity and when you see all as that unified self, there can be no anger. Love is the only response, you know? And so he's drawing out all of these particulars to show us the implications of this uni unified truth, this, this Advaitic truth of one without a second. 
So you can never pass through Maya's gates. Maya is just a name for what we see when we believe ourselves to be separate from everything else. You know? And he says that you can't have this vision. You can't know this, uh, this truth while you're clinging to particulars, while you're feeling a sense of lack in and of yourself, while you don't know what you are as that divine spark.